Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 249, Chat ZIA, recorded here on Cinco de Mayo. That's May 5th, 2023 from Zanata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Greg Belknap and let's get right on into the show. Yes, we shall. Greg, you are pitch hitting this week for uh, Tyler. He is out. He is attending right. the festivities surrounding uh, one young Josh's uh, wedding uh, up in the Bay Area. So they are having a good time. Let's hope that everybody survives that and is back on their feet come Monday. We never know, though, when you have these kind of things. So, you know. True. We, we have a it's it's kind of wedding season uh, or wedding celebration season, at least uh, here at Zanata. We've also got. Uh, one of our developers, Bruno, uh, out this last week on on his honeymoon. So, yep, yep, it's and, all uh, good. Hey, and uh, you know, uh, to any of our uh, developers or consultants, uh, fiancés or girlfriends that are watching, uh, hey, bug bug your bug your guy because uh, you know they, Tyler and Warren have been together an awfully long time. And uh, I don't see a ring on it yet. Yeah. No, no, nope. I do not. No, no, no. Not that we're trying to stir any stuff up here. No, 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 no. Never do that. No. And prior to the show, Greg and I were having a debate as to the origins of break a leg. Um, that if you miss that, uh, boy, you know you can you can't really get that. Maybe we can discuss it as we go out. You know, at the end of the show or something. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. That would be good. That is fun. Yeah. Enough of this stuff. Let us get right on into the show and let's uh, head over to some announcements and events. All right, all of our announcements events are living over on Club Zanata. That's club.zanata.com. That is where you can find everything that is going on in the world of Zoho in our online social community. All of the news that we're going to cover on this show and much more news that we decide isn't going to be on the show, but will be in the newsletter. That is here. It's under the news section. Um, all of our general discussion, announcements, and events. So let's talk about that. When you go to the homepage, you will see all of the events over here on the side uh, and everything that is going on there. If you can bat travel back in time on May 2nd, there was a Zoho Books Guided Tour. Uh, but coming up on May 9th, there's an overview of Zoho People. May 10th. Uh, startup marketing from day one, all sorts of things. If you want to know, these are all the events. This is stuff that Zoho is doing, stuff partners are doing, stuff we're doing. If you want to know just what we're doing, just click on under announcements and events, click on Zanata, and you can see all that we have going on. On May 16th, we are doing our uh, monthly webinar, and this one is going to be on Zoho inventory, Shopify, and WooCommerce best practices. Uh, you will not a good want one. to miss yeah, it's going to be a good one. I think, what do we got? We got Cody and Josh doing that one? I think so. That's yeah. Right. Shows, I mean, if we don't, we should, because they're the best They're they're the best around when it comes to uh, not only it's inventory, but especially inventory integrations. Yes. And as always, every week, we do the CRM Zen Show every Friday. Azaz drops every Wednesday. If you're unfamiliar with Azaz, that's Ask Zanata, anything about Zoho. That's where we collect all of your questions from YouTube, all of your questions from Club Zanata, all of your questions that just happen to rain down from the heavens and bop on our little heads. Freddie collects all those, puts them in a doc, we review them, then we all get on the show and we answer them the best that we can. Um, so uh, if you've got a question and you'd like to get it answered, head over to Club Zanata and click on this little part here, which is Q&A for Azaz, and you can ask us a question and we will uh, go ahead and answer that question as best we can. So this one's coming up. Is it possible to have a task on every incoming email in a deal module? I know it's possible in the lead module. We're not going to answer that right now, but guess what? We will on next Wednesday's Azaz. Uh, so anyway, and all the previous shows, by the way, live under this tab. So you can go in here, watch the show, see the answers to the questions, just kind of jump ahead. They're all here. If you're not a subscriber to Club Zanata, you really do need to head over there. All we require is your email. Verify that, and you are in the club. And with that, let's get on into the news. Well, Greg, 
uh, I don't know what we should say about this, but Zoho dropped a big one yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. They basically have built a chat GPT into pretty much every single Zoho app in some way or another, it seems. Yeah. Uh, where do we want to start with this? Uh, well, I guess where we should start with um, just the fact that uh, the AI stuff is just, it's prolific. It's, uh, everyone is, uh, is using it. Um, and I will say that I really like the way that Zoho has outlined the ways that they are using uh, the AI. I think they're using it in very, you know, specific ways that, uh, that really, uh, that, that where, where AI is a helper tool rather than like replacing any, uh you know human true human element it's yeah it's kind of helping you enhance your stuff rather than replacing you yeah yeah so anyway in crm better customer emails uh we could probably spend three hours just talking about what they've done and by the way mm -hmm. this is not necessarily fully released yet right right they're announcing it they seem to be rolling it out so if you can't find it yet just uh, pause it should be it should be coming out shortly um, but, you know, helping you write emails, helping you construct emails, the smart prompts thing is something that, by the way, that they've, I've, that is popping up all over and that should be available on a lot of people's CRMs already. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is, I'm not sure this is any chat GPT here in the smart prompt might be some of it is pretty interesting. Um, you know, you click on it and you say, you know, explore this company and it kind of gives you the basics of the company much of that um i did one the other day which was summarize this deal for me and mm -hmm. basically what it did was it took what it thought were the key things in that particular deal summarized them and put them in a little card like this so kind of nice and that you know you can copy it if you wanted to send that out but there's a lot of things to play with here and they're coming kind of fast and furious um zoho desk so, has all so are you saying that that the so you're saying that the like the the idea of with the smart prompt there is like this is creating like a little thing that you would send in an email or send like in a click notification. What where where what was the your deal summary thing? What was kind of the use case for it? Well, it's kind of hard to say what you would use it for. It was because it was just because you could look at the deal, right? But maybe mm -hmm. you wanted to send it. I'll give you an example. Let's say that uh, Zoho had sent us a lead and we were working on the deal and they said, what's, you know, can you give me an update on the deal? You could go into that deal, kind of click that, you know, give me a summary of this deal. It would pull it all together. Last phone call was mm -hmm. this. Here's the notes. Here's what's happening. Here's our expected close date. You could just copy that and just drop it right over to them, right? So um, I could see there's a lot of different use cases for this. And these smart prompts are popping up everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. inside the CRM when you look at it as well. And maybe they are, in fact, taking that entire page, dropping it through Zia and having, or dropping it through ChatGPT and having ChatGTP spit out a, uh, a summary of it. Perhaps. Don't know. Don't know. A lot going on here <laughs> that we're going to have to dive, dive into. Uh, and how are they using this in Desk, Greg? Uh, yeah, so in Desk, you know, I mean, they're using it for, uh, you know, reply uh, it mentioned in the picture over here, reply assistance, right? So something yeah. that Desk has already had, because Desk has already uh, done a pretty good job of uh, using Zia and uh, AI for like recommending articles, right? That you can link to to people. And so what the Zia Powered by ChatGPT is doing is actually helping you now write the actual email reply, not just things already in your knowledge base that could be useful. Yeah. And uh, uh, tone Also recognition. tone recognition they talk about. Yep. So yep. this is also coming on the back of, uh, I assume they're probably running this in connection with their, the stuff they built for like Zia voice, you know? Right. Not, sorry. Sentiment not, analysis. Not, not, Zoho, not Zoho voice, Zia voice. Right. <laughs> Which is sentiment analysis more than anything, correct? Yeah. Yeah, just like a more nuanced version of sentiment analysis, more than just positive, negative, neutral, but right. like this person was happy. This person was, uh, you know, uh, kind but frustrated. I don't know. Right. Well, you know, here they're giving an example. They're just reading it. You don't even have to read the email, 
you can just go to the mood analysis here and it's like, yeah, yeah Andrew's considering purchasing yeah. a fleet, right? <laughs> and so without, yep. you know, it's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, Zoho Social is uh, basically going to allow you to compose social media posts uh, with ChatGPT. Enjoy that. That should be fun. Um, you just go ahead and generate content, generate hashtags, uh, all sorts of, uh, of things. So uh, lots of emojis too. It's dropping in the emojis. Yeah. That's going to be good. Give you a nice image it, suggestions for your posts. Making it lit for all those Gen Zers. Yeah. Yeah. Image suggestions. So it, it's just you know, Zoho Mail. Again, you basically the same thing. Generating email content. Uh, changing the overall tone, formal, the informal, the friendly, oh. you know, so you go Good. to informal. Okay. So, so here's what you can do. You can write the email that you wanted to write, you know, to respond to Clark or right. whoever it was. You say, you know, what the heck, man, this is all messed up. Everything. Like, then you can go down, change the tone and it'll switch things to per my last email, uh, you know, do this. Right. So you can you can still vent those frustrations and then have Zia say, all right, cool. Let's take a step back. Let's calm right. down. Well, this one says something like, hey, Brett, I hope you're doing well. Wanted to follow up about your interest in test driving our latest lines of SUVs. You change that to informal. It'll be, sup, B-man? <laughs> How you hanging? Right? You know, it could really just, yep. do you think it could go that far? I, I mean, so, well, yeah. as, as we know, as we know with AI, it will just continue to go farther the more it gets adopted. So, but yeah, just of your know. emails. I love this email summary that could have come in handy. You know, I know some people that send me text messages that are like nine pages long. It'd be great if it could just summarize it. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me my alimony. That's, that's really the gist of it. <laughs> um, so. So assist, uh, you can auto generate chat suggestions. So, you know, you really don't want to talk to somebody. That's nice. Um, well, the thing that would be really nice about something like that is that with, yeah. cause Zoho assist, um, you know, it, you're, you're doing a live help session with somebody. Right. And so the nice thing is that, uh, with, it just helps you like get those replies to the person faster. Cause if you have to give a big detailed reply, uh, while you're typing it, I'm, I'm the, I'm the client. I'm just sitting on the other side, just waiting for you to finish typing it. Um, whereas, you know, now this could maybe get it. You're able to get that reply to that person in, uh, four seconds rather than 15 seconds. Right. And just kind of, it just makes the experience for the customer feel like things are, it feels more like a real time conversation than like a, you know, passing notes back and forth. Exactly. And it's just giving you suggestions. You're actually in, engaging with them and kind of choosing what you're doing. If you're watching us mm -hmm. on YouTube, they've kind of got some nice little chat here. I, I'm surprised the question isn't here is, how do I change my desktop wallpaper? This is disturbing. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know what's it looks going like, on. Uh, looks like a crumpled up uh, set of uh, dinner napkins. Yeah, or a dolly generated flowing rose or something, a blue. I don't yeah. know what's going on there. Yes. Modern take. Um, anyway, a whole. It's, it goes on and on. Sales IQ is a really interesting one. I've actually, a lot of people have asked about this lately. Is there a way, you know, to have ChatGPT integrate with Zia into Sales IQ? Um, so if you don't know, Sales IQ does a lot of things, but one thing it also does in the world of Zoho is it can become your chat with somebody right on your website where they can click the button. Um, I've always felt there's a lot of danger in this, you know, but if this is more of an agent is actually online and ChatGPT is suggesting potential responses, good. I think to let ChatGPT just run rogue like it's its own little Zobot um, could be problematic. Right. Well, and it's not so much that, it, yeah, so it'd be problematic in terms of people are, people are still pretty good at noticing when something feels artificial. Yes. Um, you know, obviously it's getting, you know, it, it's getting better and better, but, um, but there's sort of that, that, uh, that uncanny valley, 
right? That they talk about where it's very, it's it's like 99% human-like, but still not quite there. And if you were to just let chat GPT run rampant, I think people would, your customers would very quickly notice and catch on that like, oh, there's no real people here. These are just robots. And then they're kind of, the it's 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 a real off put uh it's a real turn off for for customers when they feel like all of the interactions are purely artificial um yep. with like support or inquiries or things like that but in this case it could be are you a robot no i'm a human but a robot's writing the answers right now you know <laughs> yep that and zoho notebook uh, you can ask zia to generate anything you want well all right then. So uh, there so you go. Looks so it looks like you know, can ask it to do image generation, which I yep. I don't know why you would necessarily. Well, I mean, I guess you could use it as like some nice uh, splash images. Like we we use AI generated art for the the Azaz show, right? As some of our background and uh, things like yep. that. So uh, yeah, you could use this in. Uh, yeah, all sorts, all sorts of ways. I don't. It's very funny. Hobbies of humans as an oil painting. What are hobbies of humans? I don't. Uh, anyway, I generated a lovely little art painting with humans as hobbies. I guess just humans that you play well, with. <laughs> well, no. I mean, well, I think it's hobbies of humans. Hum the hobbies that humans it have. So they're like. Uh, I mean, I can't tell what they're doing in that oil painting. It looks like somebody's playing. Oh, it looks like somebody might be playing the guitar. Okay, maybe hobbies of yellow shirt humans as an oil painting, right? Yes. Like maybe I, uh, I collect humans. That's one of my hobbies. I collect them. <laughs> or maybe, or is it like a hobby? A little horse? box. Please don't come to my backyard. Um, like a, anyway, yeah. Yeah. Hobbies of humans. And then uh, can write a sales report for you. Wow. Look at that. Well, let's we'll see. Pretty fascinating. And this goes, I mean, we are sitting here, we are on the very first news story, Greg. <laughs> For yep. 17 minutes. They basically, it's in Zoho meeting. It's going to basically summarize your meeting and give you a transcript. It just, um, data prep, another big one. Um, so if you're not familiar with Zoho, data prep is something you can basically load your data in and prep it. You can clean it up, you can format it, you can do all sorts of things. And I guess this is another uh, method. What, yeah, so the two, the, two big, the two biggest things in data prep uh, that they mentioned here, one is the transform by example, right? Where it's right. basically, um, it's, it's kind of like a formula helper, right? Where mm. they, they have the example of you could say, oh, I want my phone numbers to look like this. And you type in an example phone number with the example like formatting. And then the GPT, GPT will interpret your, uh, your request and then transform it into something that data prep is going to understand to essentially create the, the regular expression formula for replacing the parts of the phone number that you don't need and then trimming it down or adding parentheses if that's what you were looking for. Same thing with uh, masking credit card data. I think that was another example yeah. that I saw where you could say, wow. oh, make it so that you only see the last four digits of, of this value. Uh, same thing with the generate formula. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So here's the credit card example. Yep. Um, yep. And then the other really big one is data explorer or insights i guess they don't have it listed on here but one that they that uh there's there's some more in-depth articles about each of these apps um yes. but the one about data prep was that you could actually ask uh, you know uh zia gpt for like some publicly available data like the example they had was like oh get me um get me sales tax by u.s state and it'll just query you know like government uh available data sets to uh yet to pass those back to you so the kind of stuff where you're like oh i i don't want to have to store i don't want to have to store and keep up to date all of my all the u.s state tax information you might be able to just grab it on the fly with uh with data prep and if you're just listening to us 
Uh, this is an extremely long Zoho blog that dropped yesterday, which is covering virtually every single app that has ChatGPT integration into it now. At the end of every single section, there is a learn more prompt. Um, there were also several standalone articles that were written on some of these apps. All of those links will be in the newsletter. Um, but you know, you're going to want to go through this and kind of, kind of dive in. Uh, this one here is probably my favorite, uh, the Zoho writer. You can now just simply do a forward slash forward slash and a Zia chat window is going to appear directly inside Zoho writer and you can ask it to generate content, put in whatever prompts you want, and it's going to start good. writing chunks of your article for you. And this is super nice. I mean, I've actually used this to write some articles. Um, I shouldn't say right. It's quasi write, quasi research. If anyone has actually start used ChatGPT to write anything for them, you'll know that um, you kind of want to spend some time looking at what it's put out, right? And so what I yeah. have found is it's really, really good for research. Um, so I was writing an article the other day, um, and it happened to be about uh, a wine. And so for a whole whole other subject for those of you that know me, and it was tell me about the winery. Okay. And then it gave in that, it gave me the name of the founder of the winery. And I said, tell me about that person. And then it gave me that. And then I said, tell me about the vineyards. For, and, and basically it does all, it gives you all of this information that you would basically spend a lot longer in Google getting, right? Then it gives you a nice concise format. You can then take that, reorganize it and write it into a Right into an article. This is just beautiful because you're just, just dropping it right into your article and editing it as you go. Um, just beautiful. Yep. I now, say. I will say that uh, you probably are going to want to fact check uh, some of those uh, pieces that you get from there. Because, for example, because um, I believe uh, the Zia integrations are working with the uh, GPT 3 model, yep. which has access five. to data say again it's not three five i don't okay. think it's three five i think it's three at least okay. i think that's what i read um but whether it's three or 3.5 the gpt language model only has access to data up to 2015 i think okay, i thought three five like closed out 3.5 closed out at December 31st, 21, right? Perhaps. I don't know. I don't know where 4.0 is. We'll have to look that up. Maybe someone in the chat room. But in any case, yeah. just you do have just, to be It's careful. important to note that it's, yeah, it, it's not necessarily going to give you like today's information. Um, yeah. So, because I think, because I think like when we first made a click bot to chat GPT, I asked it about Zanata Consulting and I'm pretty sure that it did not say that you were the founder of Zanata that it had somebody else. <laughs> it just had some other name, a name that I didn't recognize. Interesting. It like, yeah, it was like it was like Kevin Fauntleroy founded Zanata Consulting in in two thousand two. Yeah, I, I remember like, Kevin. I He's one of the humans I, I collect. So. I don't, that yes. sound right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so take anyway, very uh, very cool. Zoho Analytics again. Um, you know, public data. I mean, just this. Good lord. I mean. <laughs> uh, can help it's you write good. SQL queries as well. Yeah. It's going to let you, if you want to, you know, compare public data, benchmark it, you, you can use it to pull in that public data. You know, get me a table of state-wise tax returns in the U.S. or or tax rates in the U.S. I mean, it's, it's just, um, you know, what are the sales taxes in the United States? And you can actually ask Zia to grab that data, pull it in and prop it into a table, into analytics to compare it against something else. I mean, just... Very That's powerful stuff, big. Greg. And on and on. Any, uh, I, I don't know, we can go on for hours about this, it would seem. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Zoho Click, uh, we've already used, we've got this, you know, we've been, have ChatGPT built in. We This are several different things. This plugin we announced a few weeks ago, super nice for pulling some stuff together. Um, uh, we've actually created our own little ChatGPT bot and you've been able to train it right inside of uh inside a click uh mm -hmm. just a whole uh a whole bunch there anyway any more we should say about this just go read the article and yeah i think uh i think 
everybody just needs to go and do a deep dive on because not every not every app mentioned on here is one that you're using actively in your system. So yeah. I'd say go, you know, go check the updates, uh, the news articles that we have in the newsletter, uh, find the apps that you're particularly using the most and yeah, see what, uh, see what options are available there. And if it's not activated in your system yet, uh, you know, email Zoe support asking, put me on the list, please. Yeah. All right. Well, Greg, a good show, buddy. Um, no, is there more? <laughs> oh, whoops. Are we only one article in? Oh, one, yes. yes. We're one article in. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, Zoho Meeting has some updates, uh, basically, to the calendar view. Um, so if you use Zoho Meeting, um, and you can now, well, Basically, it's got a calendar and they've made a lot of improvements. As always, has had the calendar in Zoho Meeting. But now it's kind of a, they've just made some nice improvements to how you can view your online meetings and manage your online meetings and schedule your online meetings. You can do it directly within the calendar now. Um, and you can schedule things directly from when this in, inside this calendar. So mm -hmm. very, very nice. For those of you that are used to using uh, any of the other meeting type applications that are out there, most of them have a plugin for whatever calendar you're using um, and that accomplishes virtually the same thing. But this is, uh, if you're a native Zoho, if you're living inside Zoho meeting, um, this is for you. Anything to add to that? No, not really. Other than uh, I was just, I was on a Zoho meeting this morning and ran, ran just fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. And then moving on, Zoho Campaigns, Shopify uh, integrations. So um, if you are a Zoho Campaigns user and you use Shopify, they have made some changes to this. And uh, you will need to, I guess it's if you prior to, I don't know, by June 15th, just make sure you've got the right API integration between Campaigns and Shopify. There's been some deprecation of the old campaigns. Zoho decided they weren't really happy with some of the changes that Shopify made back in October 2022. Mm -hmm. um, but they've still got a workaround for it. And so if you're using that integration, you will want to disconnect your old store from Zoho campaigns. And then you're going to want to create a private uh private app for your store, generate new API credentials, use those API credentials to reconnect your Shopify to Zoho campaigns and away you go. A little bit of a PSA here from your friends. Yeah. CRM and again, section. this only applies if you initially set up your Shopify integration before October of last year. So if, you, if, if you're if you a new Zoho Shopify campaigns user, don't gotta worry about it. Um, yeah, just for those that have already been using it in the past. All right, and moving on. So, um, so also, Greg, we made some changes to uh, Zoho social campaign. So, if you're we running did? social campaigns in Zoho campaigns or in marketing automation, there have been some changes, Greg. Yeah. So now, uh, Facebook changed uh, or deprecated uh, a number of their APIs when it came to being able to. Uh, post in pages and things like that from uh, you know an external source in this case Zoho campaigns. So they so they removed the they they can no longer post to Facebook pages uh, for you on your behalf. And so there was some some all hands on deck meeting uh, <laughs> over at over at Zoho where everyone said okay. This is a watershed moment. We can't even post to Facebook pages anymore. Is there a reason for us to cling on to all the other pieces as well? Or are they also probably going to go away? And they came to the decision of, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna pull automatic social media integrations with campaigns. Um, which at the outset sounds pretty bad because social media is very important when it comes to marketing and everything like that, which Zoho Campaigns is primarily used for. Um, but I think, but what, one of the things that they mentioned was that they want to focus on putting more effort into 
uh, improving the email channel, which is really where Zo campaign shines. And the important thing to remember is that we do still have Zoho Social, which is an excellent uh, app that uh, that you know lets you manage all of those different uh, uh, channels, posts, messages, uh, all that sort of thing. So I think it just it might require a little bit of um, you know, like if you were a social media manager, uh, then you and you weren't using Zoho Social before, you were using uh, campaigns, then you'll want to move over to to Zoho Social. Yes, and and that's at the end of the day. I mean, if you're you're doing a campaign, a social media campaign, they have another tool for it, which is better, honestly, right? Um, yeah, Zoho we. Social um... Yeah, I use I'm, I'm part of a outside of outside of uh, my job, you would never guess it, but I actually am an improv comedian, go figure. But uh, yeah, so our our improv uh, group, we use uh, Zoho Social for managing all of our uh, social media posts. Uh, and it's it's really, really helpful, really great. Um, you know, easy to schedule, easy to set up. Uh, yeah, so well, you collaborate. I mean, look, if you and, and look, if you're going to do a social media campaign and, you know, you can schedule it inside of Zoho Social, you can collaborate on it, you can build it, you can proof it, you can do all of those kind of things. And it really should live over there. Yeah, because also yep. that is where you're going to want to go anyway, because it also aggregates all of the comments, all of the likes, all of the engagement. It is all aggregated in that one app. So it's not like you're really going to go back to Zoho campaigns and say, hey, what's going on with my social media campaign? You're going to want to look in Zoho social anyway, so keep it over there. So while this seems like it might be a not a great thing, in fact, it's kind of irrelevant and um, good call Zoho at the end of the day. All right, and moving on, Zoho Backstage has got some, uh, they do this every year or every month. They kind of roll out. Here's what happened in Backstage. If you're unfamiliar, Zoho Backstage is Zoho's event manager. Think of it as in like an Eventbrite on steroids. You can book your tickets. You can build your landing pages. You can print your badges. You can manage your entire agenda and event. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And now they've actually made some changes to their email designer. So, uh, Basically, since it does everything, it's also going to send out emails regarding the conference, emails to attendees, emails to speakers, and now you've just kind of got a better email designer when setting all of this stuff up. Yeah, and it looks like they also support uh, creating segments so yep. that you can create, create emails that should go to specific uh, groups of people that are attending your overall event, because obviously, because, you know, most events you're probably going to have like breakout sessions or, uh, you know, or things like that. And so you could have, oh, here's a reminder that should just go to the, the, the actual like CEOs that are coming to this event. Whereas, you know, maybe not to all of their fellow employees that are coming along with them, something. Yeah. They've got a whole new reminder type of email going on. Basically they have their own mini version of campaigns running inside backstage that is specifically, because mm -hmm. maybe you just bought backstage, the only Zoho app you have. Um, and one of the advantages of backstage is they don't take a cut of your ticket price, which is a pretty nice thing as opposed to some of the others out there. So if you're using backstage sure. to run your entire event, you will want to send your reminders. Therefore you don't have to push it off to another type of, uh, email marketing tool to handle that for you. Um, then some minor little tweaks. If you're a backstage user, just head on over to, um, or subscribe to our newsletter or head over to Zanata.com, click on the CRM Zen show. You'll find the link to this and you can kind of run through all of those. And then wrapping up the news here, Greg, um, we spent quite a bit of time playing with this uh, prior to the show to try to figure out what was what. But Zoho Click has made some changes and kind of the big one was this dual reply mode in a channel. What did we figure mm -hmm. out, Greg? <laughs> That's a really good question. Uh, so, <laughs> so this was it. So threads, threads was something that got introduced, I want to say like eight or nine months ago in Click. So. Um, yes. Yeah, that basically you can... You, you, you were able to set up for a particular, for, for your whole organization, you were able to set up that either when somebody wants to reply to an individual message in a chat, does it show up as a brand new message in the channel? 
or do you create like sort of a parent message and then like little sub messages inside? That's that's what a thread is. And so it used to be that that was just, you had to pick for the whole organization across the board. Everybody's got to use threads or everybody's got to use uh, the normal replies. Now you can, uh, this, is, this is an admin tool. So you set it up as an admin on the back end to depending on the different types of channels, because I think they specify that you were able to set it for like personal channels, organization channels, team channels. Right. So now I, you can you set them to, go, to yep. allow both. Yeah, but that doesn't really change anything. So we went in on the back end on settings and we made it allow both for everything. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't, you then have to go down to the specific channel itself and set yeah, it in Then a channel, channel by channel basis, you can say this channel should use threads, this channel should use replies. Yeah. And it gives you, it's kind of interesting when you're hovering over if you wanted to make something kind of a threaded reply, um, when you're going to go do that reply, it gives you a little, uh, instead of just the reply arrow, there's kind of like a little text bubble, I guess, for a better word. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you and, see the, yeah, you see the little, the, the standard reply arrow and then like a, yeah, it's almost like a comment bubble or something like that. Right. Right. And you click on the comment bubble and then that is going to start a thread. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it seems like a minor little thing, but actually I think it's the biggest part of this entire, entire thing. So, and yeah. some optimization, you can now hand over, uh, the host can hand over meetings. So if you're doing a meeting and click and you're the host, you can assign it to someone else. Super nice. Um, they've optimized chat switching during meetings. So the response mm -hmm. time of 50% faster. I've never noticed it being a problem. I don't know. Uh, no. Uh, one of the features that I really like is the, uh, the iOS screen share support. Um, right. So that you can, you can share your. If you're if you're using uh, click on your phone, uh, you know for a call, which a lot of people do, uh, you can you can share your mobile screen if you needed to show somebody uh, something. Whereas previously, the only screen share was for your desktop. Yep, and it's, they've also have Microsoft Teams migration tool now. So if you are uh, wanting to migrate from Microsoft Teams um, over to Click, you can do it. So that's nice. They've had that for Slack forever. Um, and that Slack, that Slack migration is beautiful. I mean, if you if you're on Slack and you switch to Click, it's every channel's recreated, every person's added to the channel. Does a super super nice job on that as well. So, good stuff. Yeah. Anything else jumping out at you here, Greg? Um, no, nothing, nothing earth shattering. All right. Well, with but that, if you're, then if you're a heavy Click user check out some of the other ones. Yeah, pretty nice. All right, Greg, with that, let's head on over to our implementation of the week. New let's. All right, this implementation comes from Jordan and Alex. Uh, this implementation is about closing out uh, Zoho Projects tasks if a related CRM account is canceled or moved to an active. Uh, now, obviously, this one's a bit of a bittersweet implementation because nobody likes when their accounts have to be uh, canceled for whatever reason, whether it's a lost deal or uh, maybe maybe the client that you were uh, that you were pulling in went belly up all of a sudden. In any case, for whatever reason, sometimes uh, when you you might be creating a sort of preliminary projects. Uh, or it could even be somebody that you have been working with for a while, and then for whatever reason, you decide to part ways. If you have a lot of Zoho projects tasks related to that account, if you cancel it in the CRM, it's a hassle if you have to go now into Zoho projects and you got to go find the project and close everything out. This implementation is kind of taking care of that automatically that if things are getting marked as inactive or canceled in the CRM, that it will find the related Zoho project and make sure that any tasks, any open tasks that were, uh, you know, that hadn't been started yet will be moved to a, in this case, a special canceled status. So, uh, yeah, so this just ran off of uh, workflow rules that when an account's status was moved to inactive, a custom daily script would find the associated Zoho project 
find all of those open tasks and go through them one by one, uh, setting them to canceled. So just to help uh, make your uh, offboarding and data cleanup a little bit uh, smoother. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Yep. All right, Greg. Well, this is back to back you because now we're going to head back over to Club Z and we're going to talk about the code share of the week. And it happens to be written by the one, the only, Greg Belknap. Greg. <gasps> Moi? <laughs> what did you give us today, sir? Uh, so this is piggybacking off of uh, a code share that I released last week as well. Uh, there have been a lot of updates to client scripting in the CRM. Uh, you can have triggers in more places now, uh, such as the, the details page, which is probably the biggest one. It used to be that client scripting only worked on the create or edit page uh, or on the canvas view. Now you can have it trigger on the standard view as well. And so this code share here is a one that is running on that detail view. And uh, it runs to it runs on the changing or selecting of an account name, and then filters the options available in the contact name field based on the account, right? Because previously, if I made a deal and I could select any account, right? Then when I go down to the contact name on the deal, it's still gonna be just any contact in the entire CRM. And uh, while depending on your use case, you may need that kind of flexibility, but more often the contact on a particular deal is probably going to be somebody from the account that's also on the deal. So this uses some client scripting that when you select a certain account, then it just restricts those uh, contacts that show up. So now you will only see contacts that are related to that account. Um, and it's just it's just two simple lines of code. Uh, you can just drop in there. The, the, the key, the, the more yeah. tricky bit is making sure that you set all the right uh, settings for the particular client script. So I've listed them out there that you set it to the, the standard detail page whatever module it is, whatever layout you're using, pick an event field type or a field type event, select the account name field, and then on before update. Client scripting um, is one of the most powerful things that Zoho has released over the last few years. Just, yeah, it it's really amazing, is. What you, amazing what you can do with it. Um, yep. Oh, cool. one last caveat with this particular script uh, is that it's the way the, the, way the value for the account name field gets passed in, it only passes in the actual name, not the ID. So uh, it would be filtering based on account name. So if you have accounts that have this that have the same name, you would see contacts from any accounts that share that name. So just one, nice. one little caveat there. Very nice. How are you feeling, Greg? I'm feeling great. How are you feeling? Are you ang you're not angry? Oh, no rage. you know, I'm, I'm rage adjacent, you know, I'm, you that's my secret. That's my secret cap. I'm always angry. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I can handle it. Well, with that, let's get on over to our read of the week and see how just angry we can be. <laughs> We don't do reads every uh, every week here on the CRM Zen Show, but when we find something that just tickles our rage bone, well, that's... Uh... Oh, oh, God. Brett, never, never say rage bone ever again. I I hate that. That's a that's I a hard, know where that came from. Anyway, a hard uh, stop, a hard pass from me. Now, now I now now I am now I am enraged. Now I am I am legitimately angry that I had to hear you say that. <laughs> well, hey, if you've got a funny bone, I don't know, I was leaving it at that. Uh, anyway, HubSpot has put out an article on the National Customer Rage Survey and the top 10 highlights for service teams for 2023. 
Um, the bottom line here is you really should just never piss off your client um, because they are very, very, very likely to complain. Um, uh, so on the rage survey, the big highlights here is 74% of customers experienced a product or service problem in the past year. 79% will make the time and effort to complain about an issue. And 69% want more than just monetary compensation for a complaint. <laughs> they want flesh. <laughs> they want their pounds of flesh. So uh, yeah. And, you know, and, I, you know, reading through this article, uh, there's a number of the stats in here that aren't really uh, very surprising, you know, like, no. yeah, hey, people, people were upset about things last year. Okay, yeah, sure. I believe that. Uh, and then also, I think they mentioned that the top things are product pricing and product quality. Yeah, right. okay, that makes sense. Um, but the the elements in here that that I found interesting are uh so like for example you mentioned the stat of 69 percent of customers want more than just monetary compensation right uh, they mentioned that they want people that people want to feel that they are being treated with uh compassion and kindness or more specifically i think i really lock onto the word authentic right yes and this goes back to uh, what we were talking about with like the, the click bots and like using, or not click bots, like the sales IQ chat bots, right? That the thing that really turns people off is when they feel that they are being, uh, you know, sort of dismissed or, uh, you know, or unacknowledged or, um, talked down to, you know? Yep. Um, and sometimes if all you're doing is you're just passing in a refund, uh, but with no sense of like, doesn't seem like you took any kind of personal responsibility about what went wrong or, you know, wanting to make things right. Not that you have to get down and beg for your customer's forgiveness, but just at least just being, being real with people, I think is what right. people want more than anything else. What I, what I don't see or what I find really interesting about it, this in all seriousness is that you know, this very, the stat here at the beginning, which is 79% of people will take the time and effort to complain about an issue. Um, we live in a world of Yelp. We live in a world of business ratings. And the fact that 80% of the people basically will take the time to file a complaint is interesting. The number that you don't see here is the percentage of people that will take the time to write a glowing review because they loved what happened, mm -hmm. right? They loved the customer experience. I've seen it in the past. It's extremely low. It's like single yeah. digits. It's single digits. People don't even think about writing those reviews. And it really skews things. And I feel, I do feel sorry, especially for people in the hospitality industry who are, you know, caught, it's just, it's, they, they, they sit on the end of a lot of rage and, you know, they could, they could be 90% of the time giving fantastic service, have 10% where it's bad. And you know, ninety percent of the reviews are going to be about that ten percent, and it, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. It's also kind of a blackmail tool for a lot of people. Now, you will do this, or I will leave you a bad review, right? Um, right. It's interesting time. It's kind of a different. I'm going on a tangent on this, but it's interesting numbers because you really do see, um, you know, uh, yeah, this it's... this is a trend in today's society, yeah. Uh, yes, it, it most, it most certainly is. And I mean, especially, um, well, and I think a lot of, cause they, they mentioned about people are flocking to social media for, uh, for making complaints and things like that, which I think there's, there's a couple, there's a couple of different explanations for that. Right. Uh, one, you could take the direction of it's, you know, a chance for like, kind of like publicly, uh, shaming a company. If you feel like they're just doing a bad job and kind of wanting to check and see like, hey, is anybody else noticing this as well? Um, uh, and then the other element of it is uh, something else that they mentioned in this article is people feeling frustrated. One of the, some of the top uh, frustration elements for customers is feeling like there's not clear contact uh, information, right? That like, uh, I think it was like number four or something up there. Um, Right. Yeah. That like that they feel like I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm I don't sorry. know how. It hurts. 
<laughs> there's a not a private chat room andrew just posted a quote which may i can't i can't get serious anymore because he's cracking me up andrew you should never do that during the show I'm, uh, it's killing me brother anyway i'm sorry to interrupt greg but yes number four <laughs> we can't yes. repeat that on air but anyway oh god just... andrew i just looked at it <laughs> That's so good. That that is so I'm good. I'm concerned about where his mind is. Thank God we've got. I believe we have some sort of therapy benefits in our our medical plan. So we'll be looking. Yes. That. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. So well, the other thing that I would say was that um, that people are moving to social media mostly because a lot of the other channels have just kind of been closed down, right? It's like think about how many businesses now don't even have like a support phone number. Right, because they just because it's just harder to deal with, uh, you know, call volumes and things like that. So you reach out to them by email. Some places you can't even reach out by email. You have to use, right, uh, you know, just like their chat service or you know, log into their portal and submitting a ticket. And so I think people are going to social media because they probably feel that there's a, a higher likelihood that it might get in front of a person rather than getting yes. lost in a. Uh, a sea of uh, virtual red tape. Yeah, but what I have seen and talked to people about is this, uh, the blackmail parts the one that gets me is like, you will do this or I will leave you a one-star review. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so you have that, you have that thing going on now. But I do think there's legitimate, you know, people have legitimate complaints and look, all customer service, you should just be as straightforward. I mean, look, you know, if you to be do real. your best and you're genuine, right? Like we're talking about, you're genuine in trying to solve the customer's problem. You're going to go a long way. So, all right, enough of that. All right. And with that, let's head over to Zanata and see what's happening on, on our website over there. I had the good fortune to sit down this week with John Mark Bantock from Z Portals. Uh, it's been over a year since we kind of reviewed their Z Portals product, and we kind of went over all of the changes that they have made to that product in the last uh, 14 months or so. Hundreds of changes, 75 major changes, and we sat down and recorded a whole new review of Z Portals. It is literally, if you've listened to the show, uh, this is the best customer facing portal you can get uh, for um, Zoho, unless you want to build one completely from scratch using Zoho Creator. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money, this is, starts at $49 a month. That's it. And uh, you can connect just a whole variety of applications uh, into your portal and away you go from there. It is uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. You can CRM, subscriptions, inventory, vault, desk, books, sign, work drive. And I think we talked about projects on the show and that is coming in Q3. Um, so some, it's just a, a great little portal, single sign on for all those apps, present that information to your clients and uh, you'll watch it. We did, I think we did like 40 plus minutes on it. Um, it's a good overview on uh, Z mm -hmm. portals and it is the portal that we recommend here, but we did a team did a really nice write up of that uh, interview slash webinar that uh, John Mark and I did together. Yep. And uh, it's because a, a portal is really, I think, especially based off of the article that we were just talking about with the, this week's read, uh, I think a portal can really help uh, eliminate a lot of uh, confusion between uh, you know you and your customers because if they if they just have access to whatever information you have right then they can let you know if something is wrong uh, or if they have questions oftentimes they can end up finding their the answers uh, on their own rather than having to uh, reach out to support so um, yeah portals are portals are, are a must have in my opinion. That's right. And particularly helpful if you're, you know, Dr. Strange or Dr. Who, right? That's right. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. you up. Get you where yep, you, you have to, to. You have to open the portals. That's open the portal. Yeah, it's, it's my good. German Dr. Strange. Yeah. It's fantastic. Helps you travel between planets. It's a lot you can do with portals. Dimensions, planes of existence, anything and everything. That's right. Although I don't think Z Portals does that, but it will no. help you yes. connect your CRM data. It's on. Directly. It's on the roadmap. 
All right. And with that, let us head over and wrap up this show with our tip of the week. Oh! Our very own John Oda, our director of finance, the wizard of all things relating to Zoho Books, is here to help you categorize your banking transactions and reconciliations in Zoho Books. This is exciting stuff, okay? If you are really wound up about something, you've got a lot going on in your life, you do not want to sit down and watch this video because it is going to take it over the top for you. Your heart may explode. Your head won't be able to deal with it because this is, dude, this is the stuff that fun is made of, Greg. Transactions <laughs> and reconciliation in books. This yes, is- yes. Well, I will say that um, if, uh, you know, we're just coming off of uh, the end of, you know, tax season. Uh, are. If, ta- if tax time was a real headache for you because you had, you know, trouble figuring out oh, how much, God, what, what did we actually spend on this and that and the, whatever? Uh, watch this video and, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be so well equipped when yeah. uh, 2024 rolls around that you're going to be able to say, oh, is it tax time? Oh, I just already have everything set up. Export. Great. Here's everything Boom. you need. Boom. John did one on setting up the chart of accounts. And after I watched it, I felt like I'd done a workout. <laughs> it was just, oh my gosh. You know, that's the, it's the kind of stuff that it's, it's fun. Anyways, all seriousness, a great video. We are so happy. We're starting to roll out more and more finance videos. People have been asking for them. And John's just doing a great job putting these things together. Um, and, you know, if you don't know, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just head over to youtube.com slash Zanata. All of our videos are there. We put out five videos this week, buddy. It was uh, it was crazy. Uh, so there's just so much content. Um, we love the fact that you guys love it. I uh, love the feedback we're getting. And, uh, you know, we're trying to you know, people say, gosh, we'd love to see a video on this. We even have a whole section on that over on Club Z. What videos do you want to see? We're trying to get them out there so that you can get the most out of Zoho and all of the Zoho products. And uh, we continue to put those out. So if you haven't, I find that hard to believe you're listening to the show and you haven't been to the YouTube channel. But if you haven't, head over to youtube.com slash Zanata. And also, in the show notes for this show, uh, you've got a link to Z portals to get yourself a discount over there, some other stuff. So you want to check out that. There's all be sure to kind of check through the notes on some of these videos. We've put little hidden gems like that in there. And uh, please check us out. We really appreciate the support. And Greg, I guess with that, it is time to wrap episode 249 of the CRM Zen show. 250 next week. We are at 260 will be five years. So we're, I guess, 11 weeks away from the five-year anniversary of this show. We've got some fun stuff planned for that. And um, I want to thank you so much for sitting in, buddy. It's fun. Yeah. Happy to, happy to be here. It's uh it's always, it's always a, oh, gosh, what, what adjective do I use? I'm just going to say it's always a time. It's an experience doing the CRM Zen show with you, Brett. Thank you, Greg. And with that, let us wrap things up. As always, if you are using Zoho and your rage bone is going crazy because you just can't figure something out, you can just head over to Zenata.com and click on book a meeting. And uh, Tyler and I or someone from Zenata will be happy to get on the phone with you and help you with your problem. Yeah. Also on the website is where you can find uh, all of our show notes. Uh, the complete history of the CRM Zen show, all of our blog posts, uh, as well as links to uh, Club Zanata, where you can get code shares, uh, subscribe to our events, and uh, yeah, uh, don't. And we would appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube, uh, click that notification bell so you know whenever we put out something new. As Brad said, we're putting out something almost every day, uh, and uh, subscribe to the newsletter so you never miss a, never miss a beat. Thanks to you, everybody, so much for listening, and we will see you next week.